Miners from the gold rush left a lot of gold behind because they didn't have the resources to snipe. So in this video, I will cover what you need to know to get started sniping for gold. From equipment, what to wear, and of course, how to successfully find the places where gold is likely to be. So what's the first thing you need to go sniping? No, not a rifle. You need a place to go. Now there is so much to cover when talking about places to go. So at the very least, you must know what is and isn't private property or what is and isn't already claimed. And that will differ from state to state and province to province. Unfortunately, I only know how to navigate this in British Columbia. So this video is only useful to you if you already have a place to go that has gold and is safe to go to. But don't worry, there are plenty of places you can go that is open for the public and I will cover that on another video. Now, if you've seen my sniping videos before and you aren't already subscribed, please do so with that bell notification. That way this channel gets seen and I get to make more fun videos for you. So the first thing you need after you have a place to go is a mask and snorkel. I've actually seen people use fish tanks as masks, but just try to use a mask. Although I recommend you get something that's quality and will last, you really don't need anything like that. Just go to Walmart and you'll find something cheap and it will work. As for a snorkel, just use what's comfortable and can attach to the mask. I use a Hollis M4 mask and an Impulse 3 snorkel. Sounds fancy, because it is. I need something that will last as I spend a lot of time out there. Now, if you don't want to snipe in your fashionable bathing suit all the time, you're going to have to get a proper suit. I hustle and motivate. Follow me, I know the way. Not a formal suit, but a wetsuit or dry suit. Now for that big question that gets asked all the time. What's better, a dry suit or a wetsuit? Good question, not Pioneer Polly. I'm gonna explain something to you. There is a big difference between being dry and warm. I find that being in a dry suit, I can stay dry, but within a couple hours, it feels like I'm standing in a fridge. With a wetsuit, the water seeps in slowly and then it stays there, so it slowly heats up. Picture it like getting water in your boot. After a few minutes, you don't even notice it. It's a lot like a wetsuit. Now your face, on the other hand, it's gonna hurt, especially if you're working in the snow, but when you find gold, it'll keep you smiling, which keeps you warm. As for a dry suit, I'm totally not knocking the idea because there's plenty of advantages wearing a dry suit over a wetsuit, but sniping, I don't think is one of them. From I've seen wearing a dry suit is a lot like wearing a tarp and that can get easily caught in the current or even worse get caught up among the branches in a log jam and that's no good. However, some of the more modern ones don't look that bad, but I have yet to try them. Also with a wetsuit, you're much more mobile and fixing tears and rips are way easier. My wetsuit of choice is actually what's called a semi-dry Neotech wetsuit. Again, made by Hollis and to nobody's surprise, it was made in... Cambodia! Yeah. Now you don't need anything super expensive or super fancy, just something bigger than three mil, especially if you're gonna be in that colder water. This one is a six, seven, eight mil wetsuit, so it's thick, cozy, and no, I'm not sponsored by Hollis, I just genuinely love their product. In the winter time, I'll also wear a bear exowear. It's just a neoprene underlayer you can wear underneath your wetsuit to stay a little bit warmer. Gloves, you want something thick with good grip like Kevlar, boots, same thing, something with good grip. Now, before we dive into the fun, fun Finding gold stuff, we just need to figure out what tools to bring. Equipment. This is a snuffer bottle. You need this to suck up the gold. If you're lucky, you'll need to remove the lid to safely secure your bigger pieces of candy. If you don't want to buy one, you can easily make one out of water bottles, mustard bottles, or a bag of chips. I recommend you use a Garrett snuffer bottle as they are super reliable, but also remember to attach bright colored tape to it so you don't lose it, which will happen. You'll also need a scratcher tool, something that can scratch out the crevices. I don't recommend dental picks because they break really fast, but these gasket picks work really well. A crowbar is always handy as some of the rocks can be deceivingly heavy to move. The size of crowbar really doesn't matter, but also remember packing light is a sniper's delight. If you've seen my previous sniping videos before, this one might make you laugh laugh. Tweezers. I highly recommend you add tweezers to your kit because these will make picking hard to reach gold from crevices much easier. The only reason I have these beauties is because I haven't taken them to the river already. Thin interlocking tweezers work best, but regular tweezers are fine. Some extra stuff I'll bring is a GPS with a button that calls in search and rescue in an emergency. I forgot my tweezers! but make sure it's charged. A knife I attach to my leg because there are bears and cougars where I'm at, a diver's flashlight for those deeper areas, a bear banger, a camera to share my adventures with you, and most importantly, a stapler. Of course, there are other things that you could bring, but those are just the basics. Now, before we dive into the fun part of this video, some very important things to know. 
Sniping for gold is dangerous. Just being out in the woods is dangerous. I hope those of you who are attempting to do this understand that anything does and can go wrong. Have a friend with you, know where you can get service if you don't have a GPS, bring extra food, clothes, bandages. Something I like to do is wear a reflective vest when I'm with a partner. That way they always have eyes on me. Where I'm at, there's actually bears and cougars, so I'm always making my presence known by making noise and always looking over my shoulder. Some other things to avoid is jumping on rocks as every rock is slippery. Keep your snorkel out of your mouth when moving out of the water because landing on a rock with that thing in your mouth will knock your teeth out. And another obvious one, don't litter and take out any garbage that you find, please. If you find yourself uncomfortable with something, take a step back, regroup, and then come back another day if you have to. Is sniping for gold legal? So like I was saying about locations ago, this may just depend on where you live and where your prospecting is taking place. I have never heard of it being illegal other than people telling me it's illegal in my comments. Here in British Columbia, there is nothing stopping you from putting on a wetsuit and floating around in the river. I'll leave more information down below in the description. I recommend you look into actual government reputable resources for the desired information that you're looking for. I wouldn't recommend absorbing information from any website that isn't government uses words like probably or listen to 69 John 420 for any legal advice. Now let's have some fun. So now you're at the river. You're wearing your suit of choice and you're ready to go. But where do you go? You look for bedrock. Bedrock is your friend. Gold is very heavy because it's been playing in that river for millions of years. Most of the gold has worked its way through the gravel down as far as it can go, which is the bedrock. You still might have to move some gravel to get to the bedrock, but if you can find where there's already bedrock exposed, you are halfway there. Now there will be some gold in that gravel, but if it's not shallow gravel and without a dredge, you are wasting your time. So just work that easy, accessible, exposed bedrock. Once you're on the bedrock, now you look for cracks and and crevices. Over millions of years after the gold has eroded from the host rock, fell in the river and kind of made its way downstream, it's gonna slide and drag along that bedrock until it falls into a crack or crevice where eventually someone like you is gonna come along with a scratcher tool, take the rocks out of it and rescue the poor gold at the bottom. Sometimes you'll actually find the piece of gold still sticking out of that crevice, which is also really cool to find. Something I've always wanted to do is actually find that and then cut it out and then take it home so I can display a gold stuck in a crevice. There's also a technique to fanning material away. I find if you gently slap the bedrock with a straight hand, it works the best, but you can easily adjust the pressure you use depending on the material you're moving or even how deep a crevice is. No. You can also use your snuffer carefully to help blow out the deeper pinch points as well. And if you're just trying to move a mountain of gravel out of the way, try to avoid pushing the gravel with your gloves, but instead use the side of your leg arms, which are thicker so your gloves last longer. You can also remove one pebble at a time but not very productive. Once you spot gold, you simply suck it up. Squeeze the bottle and let go. That will create the suction to suck up the piece of gold. The straw in your snuffer bottle sits halfway in the bottle so you don't have to worry about the gold falling out. Now, if you find a bigger piece of gold, you really don't have to worry about it escaping. Unless, of course, you lose your bottle. If you can, I would also punch down to bedrock all across the river to try to locate what is called the line of gold. So imagine this is a river. Gold isn't gonna deposit like this. Gold is lazy, so it's gonna take the path of least resistance, which is pretty much that. But you're not gonna see that. So you're gonna have to dig here, 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 and here so that you can find this mysterious line and come home with more candy. And outside of looking for bedrock and finding those catch points to find gold, that's all there really is to gold sniping. You sort of just have to imagine where you think heavy things would get stuck. Cracks and crevices, boil holes, under boulders, and even at the far end of waterfalls. Yes, the far end of waterfalls. Most people think that the best gold is gonna be directly under a waterfall, which makes sense and is somewhat true in smaller waterfalls, but you don't realize that a big waterfall, it's been a waterfall for a long time and it erodes backwards like this. So instead of working directly under the waterfall, you wanna start where it began. Work those edges and then work that area and you'll be surprised how, how much, much more gold you'll find. find. And that's how you snipe for gold. You repeat that process of looking for bedrock and finding those catch points. And over time, you will actually become a better miner out of the water. Now, before I reveal some of my tricks of the trade, I just wanna answer some of these questions that you might find helpful as well. What gear do I need, which we covered? What are the dangers associated with diving, which I'll get to in a second, but why do you snipe for gold instead of staying on the surface to pan or sluice instead? Well, working underwater is more efficient and there's no mess involved. With a pan, you can go through a yard of dirt in maybe a day or more. The average sluice, 
maybe half an hour if you're fast, but underwater, it's a matter of minutes and sometimes seconds. You may lose a little bit of fine gold in the fanning process, but the goal here is to maximize the gold you find in the shortest amount of time. You'll have access to spots where gold has been accumulating over time and where 99% of people have never been to, especially if you're diving. So if you ask me, sacrificing a little bit of fine gold for potentially a big payload, that's worth the risk. Do you snipe in the summer or winter? I personally do this all year round. In the summer, I can access some really good spots when the water is really low. In the winter, I can work higher benches where there's crevices that I didn't want to get to in the summertime are. But there are pros and cons to both. The positive thing about summer, you can access deeper spots and soak up the sun. The negative is visibility is really bad. And if you're in an area where there's forest fires, they stop the mining access and no mining. The positive about winter sniping, at least where I'm at, is there's so much bedrock available for you just to float on over and find gold. The negative, it's much more dangerous. The water is rushing, the trees are falling, and being in Canada, everything's icy. And if the water gets too high, the visibility can be poor too. What is the one rule you never break while snorkeling, scuba diving, swimming? And how did you learn that lesson? There's a lot I could say here, but the number one rule is don't go out there alone. Even if you have a GPS and are armed like Rambo, if you hurt yourself bad enough or knock yourself unconscious, your tools and equipment are useless. I learned this lesson a few times, but more recently when I almost drowned. I was so close in fact that weeks after I had already accepted my fate, I still thought I was dead and I was disassociating from reality. I still continue to see therapy today, so I don't care how tough you are, don't be a dumb now, before we end this video, I just want to share some of my tips and tricks about gold sniping. Put rocks in your snuffer bottle so it doesn't float away. Use a fanny pack to store your snuffer bottle tools and food, but make sure it's on tight so that doesn't float away. If you find ironstone, nails, lead, or anything else heavy, you're looking in the right area. Bring a thermos with something hot to sip on throughout your hunt to keep your core warm. Once you clean out a crevice, come back a year later and you might be surprised how much new gold made its way into the same crevice. When doing number two, make sure your suit is well away from the landing zone. You do not want to find this out after you put it back on. The answer is yes. No toilet paper, no problem. Leaves, round rocks, and socks work just fine. When trying to see under the white water, build a cute little dam above it. This will slow the water down, making it easier to work that area. Got a boo-boo on your wetsuit? Use 3M 5200 Marine Sealant. It works the best. Last but not least, my favorite tip of all. Have fun. Sniping for gold is fun. You get to swim around, you get to play with your friends, and you get to find gold if you are lucky. So take advantage of your local dive shop, rent a wetsuit, and just go try it out. If you're in the Victoria area, I recommend you check out Wilson's Diving. They have been a huge help and I've been going there for years. Chris is the owner and he will treat you right. That is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, chances are you're going to enjoy what I've previously posted and what's coming in the future. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification so you don't miss another upload. If you want to see anything else extra, I'm also on other social media platforms as well as Patreon if you want to see early access videos and some exclusive stuff. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for your support and until the next one, more sniping videos that I highly recommend.